W. H. Smith has been rated the worst high street retailer in the UK this year, a survey has claimed. Shoppers criticized customer service, value for money and the standard of its stores, according to the which annual study. The retailer has been in the bottom two of its bowl for an eighth consecutive year, the Consumer Association said. Which gathered comments from 10,356 shoppers about their experience at 100 major retailers. Rise in crash for cash cases drives up total cost of insurance fraud The customer scores given were based on experiences of purchasing items other than groceries, their level of satisfaction and the likelihood of recommending each shop. In the survey carried out in January, customers complained of out-of-date W.H. Smith shops, expensive products and rude staff. John Lewis fell to 10th place, its worst ranking since the annual survey launched in 2010, but it still came out top when rated for its appliances and electronics, furniture and home, outdoor and sports and well-being and beauty. Lush, Savers and Smith's Toys were named the highest ranking shops. None made last year's top 10. Customers praised the smells of lush stores, the prices at discount cosmetics store savers, and the staff at Smith's Toys, which, said. The survey also asked shoppers what they liked about shopping in store and found customers value being able to touch, feel and try on items before purchasing, 82%, and being able to ask staff questions, 39%. But customers said they were put off by crowds, 49%, queuing, 49%, and the behavior of other shoppers, 38%. Chris Ashton of the Barbarians scores against England at Twickenham. Rory McIlroy has taken the clubhouse lead in round two of the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth. Alistair Cook batting against Pakistan during the first test match of the summer at Lord's Cricket Ground, London. Home Secretary Sajid Javid speaking at the annual conference of the Police Federation of England and Wales at the International Convention Centre in Birmingham. Felix, too, sits next to messages and flowers left in Manchester, ahead of the Manchester Arena National Service of Commemoration of Manchester Cathedral to mark one year since the Manchester attack. Marcio and Andrea Gomez, parents of Logan Gomez, arrive for a commemoration hearing at the opening of the inquiry into the Grenfell Tower disaster, in London. Brackley Town celebrate after winning the Bilbao's FA Trophy final after they beat Bromley on penalties at Wembley Stadium. Actress, Meghan Markle, reaches Prince Harry at the altar in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle for their wedding service. Workers from the Covent Garden branch of TGI Fridays on the picket line outside the restaurant as they strike in a dispute over pay. Members of UNITE are taking action on Friday in a row over tips and payment of the minimum wage. A police officer talks to a homeless man in Windsor ahead of the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Wing Commander John Butcher, commanding officer of 617 Squadron, left. Jokes with Britain's last surviving dambuster, squadron leader George Johnny e. Johnson, during an event to mark the 75th anniversary of the dambusters raids, at RAF Cunningsby. The Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight was hoping to fly one of the two remaining Avril Lancaster bombers over the Derwent and Lady Bower reservoirs, but high winds prevented the aircraft from taking off. 
2018 marks the 100th anniversary of the formation of the RAF and the 75th anniversary of the 617 Squadron Dam Busters operation. The Dam Buster Raids Operation Chastise was an attack on German dams on 16 the 17th of May 1943 by Royal Air Force No. 617 Squadron, using an innovative bouncing bomb, which skimmed on the surface of the reservoir before hitting the dam wall and exploding. President of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan speaks as British Prime Minister Theresa May listens during a press conference after their meeting at 10 Downing Street. Erdogan is in the UK for a three-day visit, which includes a closing lecture at the Tat Liddell Forum in Oxford, an audience with the Queen and talks with Theresa May. The funeral cortege of Alfie Evans goes past Everton's Goodison Park ground in Liverpool. Doctors at Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool stopped providing life support treatment to Alfie last month after his parents, Tom Evans and Kate James, lost two rounds of fights in the High Court, Court of Appeal, Supreme Court and European Court of Human Rights. Daisy May Cooper, the winner of the Female in a Comedy Award for this country, with her BAFTA. Thousands of union members march through central London demanding a new deal for workers, in an event organized by the Trades Union Congress TUC. Jeremy Corbyn with shipbuilding apprentices at the Fairfield Shipbuilding Museum in Govan. During a speech here he called for Navy shipbuilding contracts to stay in the UK. Dominic Chilcott, right, British ambassador in Turkey, hands over a letter of apology from the UK government to Libyan dissident Abdul Hakim Belanj, at the British consulate, in Istanbul. Abdul Hakim Belanj and his wife, Fatima Boudka, Alleged they were detained in Southeast Asia in 2004 and sent to Libya to be interrogated by the regime of late dictator Muammar Gaddafi. Britain acknowledged Thursday that its intelligence agents played a role in the kidnapping and torture of an opponent of the late Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, a rare admission of wrongdoing by British spies. The coffin of former House of Commons Speaker Lord Michael Martin, followed by his widow Mary, is carried from St. Aloysius in Glasgow after his funeral. The former Labour MP died on Sunday April 29 after a short illness at the age of 72. Mayor of London Sadiq Khan and Labour MP Heidi Alexander. Ms Alexander is standing down from Parliament after being confirmed as London's Deputy Mayor for Transport, replacing current Deputy Mayor Val Shawcross. Arsene Wenger bids farewell to Arsenal Football Club and the stadium he helped to build in more ways than one. It was Wenger's final home game of after 22 years in charge. Arsenal sent him off with a 5-0 victory over Burnley. Manchester City celebrate with the trophy after winning the Premier League title. Anti-independence supporters wave Union Jack flags as thousands of demonstrators march in support of Scottish independence through the streets of Glasgow. Prime Minister Theresa May with her supporters during a visit to Wandsworth Town Hall, where the Conservative Party retained control of Wandsworth Council in the local elections. Jeremy Corbyn outside a polling station in Islington after voting in the local elections. A memorial to George Michael outside his house in Highgate, North London. George Michael's family have since asked fans to remove their tributes from outside the late singer's former homes for the sake of his neighbors. 
Lester Morris went during May Day celebrations at Bradgate Park in Newtown, Linford, Leicestershire. Sajid Javid outside the Home Office in Westminster after he was appointed as the new Home Secretary. Celtics celebrate after winning they confirmed winning the Scottish Premiership by beating rivals Rangers 5-0 at Celtic Park. Eagle release balloons outside Alderhey Children's Hospital in Liverpool, following the death on Saturday morning of Alfie Evans, who was being treated at the hospital. The 23-month-old died at 2.30 a.m., parents Kate James and Thomas Evans said on Facebook. The youngster was at the center of a legal battle over his treatment that touched hearts around the world. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, right, speaks with British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, left, and Belgian Foreign Minister Didier Reinders, centre, during a meeting of the North Atlantic Council at NATO headquarters in Brussels. NATO held its last major meeting in its old headquarters, with talks focused on strained ties with Russia, a fresh peace effort in Afghanistan and a new training mission for Iraq. A protester wearing a mask depicting Facebook's CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, flanked by two protesters wearing angry emoji masks protest outside Portcullis House in central London. Facebook's CTO Mike Schroepfer appeared in front of British members of Parliament on the Digital, Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee in the wake of allegations that information on millions of its users was misused. Members of the military work in the Maltings shopping area, close to the bench where Russian former double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were found critically ill seven weeks ago. The area around the bench where the couple collapsed is one of nine sites to be cleaned in an operation that is likely to take several months. A statue in honor of the first female suffragette Millicent Fawcett is unveiled as Prime Minister Theresa May and Mayor of London Sadiq Khan look on during a ceremony in Parliament Square. The statue of women's suffrage leader Millicent Fawcett is the first monument of a woman and the first designed by a woman, Turner Prize winning artist Gillian wearing OBE, to take a place in Parliament Square. Prince William arrives at the Lindo Wing of St. Mary's Hospital with his children Prince George and Princess Charlotte after his wife Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, gave birth to a son. Kenya's Eliud Kipchoge crosses the finish line to win the men's elite race at the London Marathon 2018. Team England athletes during the Commonwealth Games Team England parade in Victoria Square, Birmingham. Van Chopra of Essex during the Specsavers County Championship Division 1 match between Essex and Lancashire at the Chelmsford County Cricket Ground. The game is being played in the warmest April temperatures in 70 years. A young boy cools off in the fountains in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau takes a selfie with Mayor of London Sadiq Khan and New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern at City Hall in London, during the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. They discuss gender equality and issues affecting young people with London school children. Prime Minister Theresa May hosts a meeting with leaders and representatives of Caribbean countries, at 10 Downing Street on the sidelines of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Anira Thomas, the first baby to be born on the NHS addresses the Unison Health Conference at the Brighton Centre Sir Patrick Stewart addresses the crowd during the People's Vote campaign launch on Brexit at the Electric Ballroom in Camden Town. 
Prime Minister Theresa May gives a press conference at Downing Street following British military action, alongside US and France, against Syria. British jets fired missiles at a Syrian military base suspected of holding chemical weapons ingredients. England's Katerina Johnson-Thompson celebrates after winning the heptathlon with compatriot and bronze medal winner Eve Emerson during the 2018 Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast in Australia. Quaker Alan Pinch makes tea for passers-by as he holds a protest in Manchester against UK military intervention in Syria A man pulls the flowers down from a fence opposite the house of Richard Osborne Brooks in South Park Crescent in Hither Green, London The shrine has become an unlikely flashpoint of tensions between the grieving family and his neighbours since last week's incident where burglar Henry Vincent was killed by Richard Osborne Brooks at his house. Jonathan Powell, Lord John Alderdice, Lord David Trimble, Sir Reg Empey, Lord Paul Murphy of Torbine and, front row left to right, Professor Monica McWilliams, Seamus Mallon, former tea shop Bertie Ahern, Senator George Mitchell, and Jerry Adams, at an event to mark the 20th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, at Queen's University in Belfast. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan and Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn gesture during the launch of Labour's local election campaign in central London. Hungarians queue to vote in their country's general election, in central London. Orthodox Jews show support for a protest outside Downing Street in London, after at least nine Palestinians were shot and killed by the Israeli army at the Gaza-Israel border. Charlie Danfield of England celebrates winning gold in men's 4,000 meters individual pursuit finals, alongside Scottish silver medalist John Archibald and New Zealand's Dylan Kennett with the bronze at the 21st Commonwealth Games in Australia. Ben Plissett, which magazine editor, said, It is clear that our traditional high street is changing and while this is bad news for some retailers who have struggled to adapt, others have seized the opportunity to make their mark. Our findings show that if retailers can strike the right balance between good value, quality products and first-class customer service, shoppers will keep coming back to their stores. W.H. Smith has been contacted for comment. The top and bottom rated stores for 2018, according to the which, survey of 10,356 shoppers is as follows. There needed to be at least 30 responses for a shop to make the table. Sample sizes are in brackets. Top rated shops. 1. Lush, 81%, 183, equals Savers, 81%, 185, equals Smith's Toys, 81%, 186, 4. Screwfix, 80%, 184, equals Tool Station, 80%, 178, 6. Body Care, 79%, 185, equals Richer Sounds, 79%, 124, 8. The Perfume Shop, 78%, 180, equals Waterstones, 78%, 185, 10. The Body Shop, 77%, 184, equals Dunhelm 77%, 185, equals Ikea 77%, 185, equals John Lewis 77%, 185, bottom, 
vibrated shocks, 90, Dorothy Perkins slash Burton, 66%, 370, equals Halfords, Incorporated Cycle Republic, 66%, 182, equals Miss Selfridge, 66%, 185, equals Ryman 66%, 183, 94, JD Sports, 65%, 185, equals Toys R Us slash Babies R Us, 65%, 185, 97, Home Base slash Bunnings, 64%, 553, 98, Evans, 63%, 179, equals Sport Direct, 63%, 370, 99, Clinton's 60%, 182, 100, W.H. Smith, 58%, 184, Press Association, 